All right. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I know that there are a lot of people watching that have, have been waiting for, the, for this talk for some time. Uh, it has been in the making for uh, several months. Um, so the, um, the discussion in this talk is going to be about how startups can monetize their APIs. So basically, they can get an additional revenue stream from their APIs uh, by selling that data to smart contracts. Uh, my name is Fernando. I'm the senior manager for the technical team of the Oracle Startup Program. Uh, Oracle ha um, has been running a startup program for about three years um, with great success, with hundreds of startups currently in the program and many more uh, coming. Um, so the, the agenda here um, is pretty sh actually pr pretty short, but um, we, we're going to give you an overview of APIs and, and blockchain, uh, you know, just so you understand the opportunity. I mean, why would you want, uh, why would a startup want to sell their data to the blockchain and, uh, and how popular APIs uh, have become? in the recent years. Then I'm going to walk you through uh, the architecture of a solution that I have been working on uh, with my team and uh, that we offer to the startups that are in the program. I'm going to give you some examples of startups that are currently in the program that could be using this new uh, solution going forward. Uh, I'm going to make a big announcement. So. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of, of people from uh, uh, one of the involved communities, from the Chainlink community, waiting for this. So it's going to be a pretty big announcement of a collaboration between uh, the Oracle Startup Program and Chainlink. And I'm going to leave you with some of the next steps. This is actually the beginning of a six-month or maybe more run, um, and I'm going to talk about that later. Um, so the, to talk about APIs in blockchain, um, I, I did invite a friend, Pablo, who's here, um, who works in the Oracle Customer Innovation Labs in Sao Paulo. We're both from Brazil. And, um, and I have been bugging this guy for six months about this talk, so I think it's only fair that he gets uh, to share some of the spotlight and, uh, and talk to you uh, for a few minutes about APIs in blockchain before we uh, start talking about the, uh, you know, the architecture of the solution. So, Pablo, take it away. Thank you, Fernando. Well, to start this talk, I will start with a question. Why connecting startups' API to the blockchain? And I was writing a report for Smart Beer, the recent this year, and some interesting facts. Uh, three quarters of startups are already developing uh, internal and external APIs, and the reason Half of them is developing to partner with other companies, both consuming API for data or selling their data, monetizing their API. Some data about blockchain. Uh, the World Economic Forum in Davos uh, recently did a research and estimated that by 2027, 10% of the global GDP will be stored on blockchains. So that's nearly $8 trillion. And talking about blockchain and startups and PIs, the same uh, study by SmartBear uh, identified that nearly a third of startups believe that blockchain will be the biggest growth in API adoption will be because of blockchain. But if you do a comparison about startups, APIs, and blockchain, you have a tale of very two different worlds. You have startups, APIs that uh, confiability, integrity, security depends on a bunch of factors that is not easily controllable. So it is chaotic environment. Contrasting blockchain environment where data is highly secure, reliable, and trustworthy if he is on, off, on chain in a blockchain. But there's a lot of opportunities to unite those worlds. What comes with a bunch of challenges also? And now I'll let Fernando walk you through of some of those challenges and uh, recommend a possible solution. Thank you. Yeah, so as 
Pablo was saying, um, th there is a technical challenge that um, many of you watching may be aware of, um, which is that uh, it's, it's, it's just not a good idea, to, to put it simply, it's just not a good idea for a smart contract to, to go to an external API without a middleware in the middle, right? Um, there's a lot of things for the middleware to do, like you know, in traditional middleware, right? There's a lot of uh, uh, things that a middleware can do to reduce the burden on the application. Um, it's the same as many uh, platforms that we had before, and um, it's the same with uh, smart contracts. Um, um, so, and then there's the mem, there's always a mem, the blockchain talk, uh, which is, uh, you know, br br uh, the, the, the concern is bringing bad data to, uh, to a smart contract is just not a good idea. So as Pablo was saying, the blockchain is highly secure, it's reliable and trustworthy, you've heard it many times before, but the, the external data isn't, right? So if your smart contract takes input from somebody else, from, you know, from some other source, and that data, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it, and that bad data, you know, gets in your smart contract, it, it doesn't really matter, you know, how secure or reliable or trustworthy the blockchain is, that blockchain is now ruined, right? It's now, it's now dealing with bad data, uh, which is definitely not a good idea. So in order to, to fix that, a number of vendors have introduced a midway, as I mentioned before. And uh, in, uh, I'm working especially with one, uh, which I'm going to talk to you about called uh, Chainlink. So the, the solution that we have developed and that we are now offering to the startups in the Oracle startup program starts with uh, the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So for those of you that don't use the Oracle Cloud, uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure is the infra it's, it's the infrastructure services provided by Oracle, which are, uh, are similar to um, other clouds. Uh, so we're talking here about you know, compute, basic compute network and storage. Um, Oracle also offers a managed blockchain service. So, and this is for enterprises, right? Oracle is, is uh, as you know, is primarily targeted at, at enterprises. So this is a managed service for enterprises based on Hyperledger Fabric, right? That has been very successful. So um, I don't really, uh, I can't really share the numbers, but uh, this thing has been selling very well, right? So enterprises are um, signing up for this service uh, to to start their blockchain uh, projects, right? Um, and again, based on Hyperledger. Um, so in, inside that platform, right, what you what you get, simply put, is a number of nodes that that have at least two things, right? So they have a copy of the ledger, right? You've heard about it before. A copy of the ledger, AKA a copy of the data. And they have what Hyperledger calls chain codes, which are the smart contracts that I was referring to before. Um, so in Hyperledger, they're called chain codes. So to a minimum, that's, that, that's what you would expect in each node in your uh, blockchain running uh, in the Oracle blockchain platform. Um, on top of that, in this solution, I add a, a Ethereum client because in order to, to get to Chainlink, which again is gonna be the middleware between the Oracle blockchain platform and the startup's APIs, I, I need to go to Ethereum. So uh, this is an, uh, an example which is not as common uh, as you would think of one blockchain going to another blockchain. So this is uh, a private uh, blockchain, right? I don't know what you would call it, a permissioned uh, blockchain going to a public blockchain, a non-permissioned blockchain um, on, on its way to a startup's API, right? You would anyway go to the external world, right? Uh, but in this case, you're going to first go through, uh, first go to Ethereum and then to the startups API. So, using that Ethereum client, chain codes reach Ethereum, right? And in Ethereum, you have, um, you, you also have a few components that uh, are important to understand. First is you, you got a copy of the ledger. This is not the same ledger, obviously, as in the blockchain platform. So the, the Oracle blockchain platform, that's the enterprise using it, right? That's the enterprise data, right? In Ethereum, there's, there is also a ledger, but it has nothing to do uh, with the enterprise ledger. Um, and there, you have two new components that you may not have heard before. One of them is called Chainlink. So the company and, and uh, the software has a, have the same name. So. Uh, what that chain link does, right? It, it's it's going to serve as what in blockchain is called an oracle, right? So it's going to be 
uh, a piece of software, right, which it is also a contract, it's a piece of software in between uh, the chain codes in, um, in the Oracle blockchain platform, AD API. So that's a piece of code that you need to write. That piece of code uses another piece of code called external adapter, which is the code that actually makes the call to the external API. So what we're building here is uh, a solution to get to the startups APIs, which starts with chain codes, um, which may be written actually in a variety of languages and, and run in the Oracle blockchain platform. This is something that the enterprise uh, writes, right? So this is the Oracle customers writing it, Oracle, you know, 430,000 customers in 175 countries, right? So, so, so those are the Oracle customers writing those chain codes. And, and, and going through Ethereum and Chainlink to get to a startup's API and, and have the same um, high security, reliability, and trustworthiness that they would get um, if they were only dealing with data that is already in the blockchain, with data that is uh, uh, on-chain, right? So it is a lot of software to write, right? Um, and I'm going to go back to this uh, later. So, um, for, so if you are an enterprise and you want to consume, uh, like let's say, Enterprise are never small, right? It's, not, it's, 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 never about, it's never about consuming one API, right? That's not, 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 not going to happen, right? So I've been in the enterprise software business for 20 years, and uh, uh, I've, 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 I've already found myself working for companies that had like 60, 100, uh, you know, 600 systems just around the one that I was responsible for, right? So enterprise is also always big, right? Um, so if an enterprise wanted to consume, let's say, 10 APIs right, uh, in the, their chain codes, they would need to, to build by themselves you know, these chain links and these external adapters for each one of those APIs. Right? So that's a lot of work for the enterprise. Right? That's also a lot of work for the startup. Right? So if the startup decided all of, you know, uh, to in advance to having a deal, uh, write to these chain links and write to these external adapters and make those available to the, to the enterprise, th that would still be a, a lot of code. But when you're talking startups, there's another problem, which is they have few resources, right? Um, they don't have the same money as the enterprise, so they may not really have the capacity, so to say, right, to write all of this code in advance and let it sit there until an enterprise actually wants it. So we have a problem, right? So uh, the uh, enterprises using enterprise blockchain in, in, in a product like the Oracle blockchain platform, they do want to consume external APIs with all these guarantees that uh, Chainlink and, and decentralized middleware like it uh, offer. Um, but, they, but it's a lot of software for them to write by themselves. And startups, even though they kind of have an incentive, they're probably going to have trouble. Um, or they're going to face challenges writing all of the software in advance um, to having an actual deal. Right? So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a classic startups problem. And uh, I think a company like Oracle and um, our or, or in our startup program can greatly help to fix that, and I'm going to tell you how. But before I get there, I want to give you some examples of startups that are currently in the program that uh, are already working with me and my team um, to implement the solution. Right. So uh, companies that that are either already working or uh, considering working with us. Uh, for this solution. The first one is a company from Brazil uh, called Smart Trips, right? We have companies everywhere, right? So the, 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 the Oracle Startup Program is truly global, so we have startups from pretty much everywhere. Uh, you know, just like Oracle has offices everywhere, we have startups from everywhere. And Smart Trips is from Brazil. What Smart Trips does is pretty interesting. Um, so if, if you're a business traveler and you pick uh, a cheaper alternative for a flight or a hotel. They, well, you know, they take the most expensive flight that you could possibly uh, pick. They pick the difference between that price and, and the price of the alternative that you picked 
and they give you that money as a credit, as points, right? Uh, so they have the ability to answer that question, which is, was this flight a cheaper alternative for my employee at booking time? So they have the capability, they have an API that can give that information, right? They are not a blockchain company, right? So we're not talking here about, you know, connecting blockchain companies to yet another blockchain company, right? That's actually pretty common. What, what we are aiming for is a solution to connect known blockchain startups, startups that are not necessarily using blockchain today to the blockchain uh, uh, revolution, right? To make them available in blockchain and to, and, and to help them to monetize what they have. So this is an API that smart trips could potentially monetize, right? So it's very possible, it's very likely that our companies outside of smart trips itself that would want to consume that information, right? And that's the kind of information that, you know, you, you can think of a smart contract that could use that, right? Um, and, and by the way, this potential consumers of an API like that uh, even include, you know, people um, uh, already working with smart trips, right? So perhaps the smart trips itself is not using blockchain, but uh, a company working with them is using blockchain and, and, and like to consume that event, to consume that information uh, from smart trips through an API, right? So this is the first example. The second example comes from Asia, from India. It's a company called Incraft. What Incraft does is also very, very interesting. They um, monitor invent inventory of, um, of, a, of, 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 of a certain brand, right? They work for brands. So they monitor the inventory and they can tell you when that inventory needs to be rebalanced across retailers. So let's say you have two retailers, one of them for some reason uh, you know, um, uh, starts to sell exceptionally well. So something happens and this, this one retailer starts to sell exceptionally well beyond uh, the, what was, was planned. These guys can tell you when that happened, right? So, so again, that, that's the kind of information that they could sell, right? So in addition to have that information consumed by their own systems, they could sell that information to other parties, a third party, to, uh, they could share that with a partner. I mean, uh, it's, again, not very difficult to think of, uh, um, of somebody around their ecosystem, around that company that could use that data. Again, Incraft, like SmartTrips, is not a blockchain company, right? Uh, they don't even use blockchain, but they have an API that can give you that answer and I'm sure they would like to monetize it, right? Uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't take you much time work with startups or with anyone, right, to learn that people like to make more money, right, to, to, to get a new revenue streams, and, and, and APIs are this um, unexplored um, revenue stream for most startups, right? Um, I, should, I should actually take the time to say that there are actually startups that sell their APIs, right? It's not... Uh, um, Actually, it's not as usual as you would think, but uh, startups do sell their APIs, but, but, but they do that with like a separate product, right? Um, a separate subscription service, right? Um, other, than, uh, other than through the blockchain, right? Uh, and even though it's, it's, it's not really the topic of my conversation here, you could argue that selling data in the blockchain is uh, considerably easier, right? than selling it with your own subscription service because there's a lot of things that you do for a subscription service that you don't need to do in the blockchain, including uh, crypto payments, right? So, so if, if, you, if, if you're getting all your payments in crypto, right, that makes your life much, much easier than taking uh, fiat money, right? And dealing with you know, the crazy, completely you know, nuts uh, you know, global payment system. So the third... Um, the third example comes from uh, Europe, from the UK, right? It's a company called IGLIs. And IGLIs is in, in the travel time search business. So what they can do is they can tell you how long it's gonna take for you to get somewhere uh, and how long, for example, it's gonna take you to take a package to a customer, right? So they have an API that can tell you that. Um, IGLIs, by the way, already sells uh, API. They have an, an, an API. Uh, product, right? They sell access to the API, not to smart contracts, not in the blockchain, but they do have an API. And that's the question that they can answer. How long is it going to take for you to deliver a package to a customer, right? So there you go. You, you have, I have three startups that are already in the Oracle startup program, which is called Oracle for Startups, 
they are all over the place, right? And one of them is in the Americas, the other is in Asia, the other is in Europe. All these three guys could be selling their data in the blockchain, but they're not, right? And uh, again, I think that a company like Oracle and a, and a, a startup program like ours should be able to help uh, these companies to create that ad additional uh, revenue stream. And why not? And, 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 uh, and also create this ecosystem around, uh, uh, around them, right? So um, what I usually say is that uh, Oracle's and all the other big vendors, their biggest asset is the ecosystem, the ecosystem that they created around them, right? So there are millions of people certified in Oracle technology. There are, you know, uh, you know hundreds of, uh, you know, thousands of partners and thousands of, you know, ISVs working with Oracle. That took us, you know, uh, a few decades to create. And that's something that a startup um, can, uh, it's very hard for a startup to create by itself. So again, I think, um, you know, uh, in addition to just giving them the technology, the, the, technology, uh, the, the technological help, right, to give them the support that they need to connect the APIs to blockchain, Oracle's contribution uh, can really be, you know, helping these companies to, to create this ecosystem around them. Right? So to find these partners, to communicate with these partners, and um, to make their business more successful. So I have an announcement, and I'm sure Twitter uh, is, is going to like this now, right now. So the announcement that I'm making here is that you know, to support startups that want to sell their API in the blockchain, other than just talking about it, right? Other than just giving you a diagram for it, right? Or to give you a link uh, with the code for you to do that, right? Other than just doing that, right? We are actually going to develop, uh, we're going we're to pick 50 startups, and we are going to do it with them, right? So, from, uh, so we're going to pick 50 qualified startups, and develop chain links for them. Again, chain links the software between the Oracle blockchain platform and uh, the startups APIs. We're going to pick 50 startups, and we're going to develop chain links for each one of them, and we're going you know, to prepare them to sell to our customers, which are many, right? So, we, so, so we're actually going to do it, right, uh, with them, rather than just tell them how to do it, right? Um, and, and, and by doing that, again, I think we do uh, more than just give technology support. We actually um, uh, help those companies uh, grow, right? As I said, startups vary, you know, more often than not, they want to do things, but they don't have the resources or they don't have the time, so uh, we're going to fix that. So um, my team, uh, the, the team that I manage, is going to give, um, you know, is going to give uh, Arctet uh, to the effort. It's going to... We're going to form a squad with one architect from Oracle, one specialist from Oracle, and one or maybe two uh, resources from the startup. We're going to get together and we're going to develop, co-develop these chain links with these 50 companies from all over the world. And we are going to announce these 50 companies in the Oracle Cold One conference in San Francisco in September. Right? The Oracle startup program is open to all startups, right? So any startup, you know, that is watching me right now, right, or um, can join the program, right? There's no selection, right? So any startup can join, right? Any startup from any country, in any industry, it doesn't matter if it's B2C or B2B, it doesn't matter, right? You can join the program to participate in this uh, initiative, right? And on top of, you know, have, you know getting the chance to, to uh, work with my team to develop these chain links, you're going to get, uh, by joining the program, free cloud, cloud credits, a 70% discount. So when you, your credits run out, and uh, you still have a 70% uh, discount, which is, which is huge, right? And makes us uh, you know, cheaper than any, anyone else, right? So, so we give you free cloud credits, we give you a 70% discount, we give you unlimited access uh, to Oracle's 24 by 7 by 365 technical support uh, with additional Q&A and escalation support from my team, 
So again, we go uh, beyond other programs because we just, we, you know, we, we just don't give you credits, we just don't give you a discount. Uh, we give you unlimited access to support and additional support on top of that with our own team um, for Q&A and escalation, right? And that's among other benefits. So you can go to the program website right now, www.oracle.com slash startup and join the program. This is an equity-free program, right? We're not in the business of, uh, you know, um, buying companies through the program. That's not what we're doing, right? So uh, it's an equity-free program that offers you all those benefits, and it's also going to offer you uh, a special, um, a special uh, uh, opportunity to work with my team, right? To work with me and to work with my team in the development of chain links that are going to help you to monetize your APIs in the blockchain. So again, other than just telling you how, you know, giving you diagrams or code, I'm, I'm actually going to do it for you, right? So, but I need startups, right? So if you're watching this uh, and you can, and you want to explore the idea, right? with me and with my team to sell your data to a blockchain, right? Join the program now and then we'll talk, right? Join the program and then we'll talk. We will, we will discuss the opportunity. We will try to find, uh, maybe we can even find customers for your API in the program itself, right? Again, hundreds of startups, right? Or, you know, I have this other 400, 430,000 uh, customers of mine that I'm sure, um, you may be interesting, interested to reach, and they may be interested in consuming uh, your data in the uh, on the, the Oracle blockchain uh, platform. So again, very special opportunity, a very important announcement, and we are going to announce uh, the winners in uh, the Oracle Cold One conference in September. Right? It's September six, between six, uh, September 16 and 19. I don't have the date yet, but it's uh, the session is confirmed. It's going to be in September in Oracle Cold One. So before I go, let me leave you uh, with some of the next steps here, right? So the first step is any startup that is interested in monetizing their APIs in the blockchain can join the Oracle for Startups program now, right? Free, site is up, right? Go ahead and, 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 and join the program, right? Um, and then we, 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 you know, uh, we're going to talk. The next step is... Uh, which is already in progress, we are gonna, my team is going to publish new content about how to run Chainlink and Ethereum on OCI, on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, right? So, um, if, so um, it, and, and this, this is also for the startups, but this is also for other entrepreneurs or other members of the Link community, my fellow Marines, right? Which may be interested to, to learn how to run uh, Chainlink and uh, also Ethereum on OCI. So we're going to publish that content in the next uh, few weeks or months, right? Um, in between now and September. So we're going to publish that content in the official uh, program uh, block, right? In the official Oracle uh, for Startups uh, block, right? Uh, then we're going to also publish content about how to develop these chain codes, right? So how to actually write code that runs in the Oracle blockchain platform and goes through Ethereum, right, um, and Chainlink to a startup API. So we are actually going to publish content um, for you to, know, to, to learn how to do it, right? So for those startups that are not selected, right, to work with us, uh, um, uh, you're going to get, uh, those startups are going to get instructions to do it by themselves, right? So we're going to publish content about, you know, uh, how, a, uh, how an enterprise uh, can develop the whole thing by, by, by itself if, 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 you know, uh, if, if they choose to do so, or how a startup can write the, you know, the chain link and deploy it on OCI and connect it to Oracle blockchain platform. So that's another piece of content that we're going to publish in between now and September. Then in September, we have the Oracle Cold One talk. So I fly again to from Brazil to the US uh, for a conference. It's going to be the Oracle Code One conference here in San Francisco. Um, and after that, we start developing the chain links, right? So after I, I have selected the startups, right, um, we're going to form the squads with the 50 of them, right, using the resources of my team. And we are going to start developing these things and announcing them, right? 
So uh, it's, it, 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 it is certainly going to take some time, right, to, for us to develop it's 50 pieces of code, right? So it's going to take us some time. And, uh, and this is the kind of thing that you will also want to space a little bit, right, just to give every startup the, a little bit of the spotlight. So we are talking about making announcements of new chain links for maybe a year, right? So this is not only Oracle. Um, the Oracle for, of Oracle for Startups uh, telling you that uh, we are going to develop 50 Chainlinks um, in collaboration uh, with the Chainlink company. Um, this is Oracle for Startups telling you that we are going to do it f for a year, right? We're going to do it 50 times over a year, right? And we are going to publish uh, uh, these, um, this code and uh, run these announcements you know, uh, all over a year, right? I'm thinking it may take about a year uh, to complete the 50, right? And nothing really stops us from picking other 50 companies after this. Um, again, Oracle um, has resources to support startups, has a lot of resources to support the startups, and has all their interest in the world to connect them to the Oracle blockchain platform and to offer that connectivity to our customers, right? So we have all the interest in the world to do it. So we're going to do it with 50 now. Let's see how it goes, right? And, um, and, uh, and we'll take it from there, right? So again, before I go, the important thing is if you work in a startup or if you own a startup that could potentially sell data, uh, API data, right, in, to, to a smart contract in a blockchain, right? If, you think, if you're not thinking, yeah, that, that sounds like something that I could do, right? Or you know somebody that works in a startup uh, that could use that, uh, no, please invite them to join the program. Right? So to go to oracle.com slash startup to, to read about the program, uh, th there's also, you know, obviously a channel for you to, to get in touch with, with us for additional questions before you sign up. Um, you know, take a look, sign up, right? Join the program, right? And uh, I'm going to be more than glad to work with you and your team, right, to explore this business opportunity, right? and maybe select you to be one of the 50 companies that are going to work with us um, uh, um, you know, uh, to, to co-develop this uh, code right, and this content.